Hi everyone, this is Juan. Here's Trevor. Hey guys. And today we're gonna to talk about this airplane. The Aronca L-16 was a United States Air Force liaison aircraft which saw extensive service during the Korean War. A converted version of the Aronca Champion, it was used as an observation platform and was capable of operating from small, unimproved airfields and was regarded as very roomy for a light plane. Between the A and B versions, there were approximately 600 built for service with the armed forces. Starting in 1955, large numbers were transferred over to the Civil Air Patrol, and several examples can still be seen flying today. The specifications for the L-16 are as follows. And now, let's hear from a pilot and instructor in this aircraft, Trevor. So, my name is Trevor Eady, and this is an L-16 Grasshopper. Originally, this was a, an Aronka Champ, which is an aircraft that was made to kind of compete against the Piper Cub. Uh, beyond that, it moved into uh, the L-16 status as the Air Force needed something to um, use as an observation aircraft. So, this was used primarily in Vietnam and South and the Korean War. Um, as observation aircraft. So they would take this and look out, um, kind of scout for um, potential forward bases from where they were, um, and then enemy locations just ahead of them. Um, the aircraft itself is a 1947, just tandem seat, um, tailwheel airplane. So the L-16 is a um, two-place tandem seat uh, tailwheel aircraft. Um, it's made of tube and fa fabric, um, or as a tube and fabric design, uh, which is to say that it's made of steel tubes with uh, fabric just put over top of it to make the form. So, um, like for example, this airplane lay, it weighs less than a thousand pounds, um, whereas something like a Cessna could be um, twice or more than that. So, uh, powered by a Continental uh, 85 horse engine, um, and so not nothing crazy. This isn't an extra with 300 horsepower or a 180 horse Cherokee. This is. Um, it is more than your lawnmower, but maybe a little less than your car. Uh, 1947, this thing was built, or put together, and um, certified. After that, it became you know, a US Air Force airplane. Uh, we don't have any record of if it was in any pivotal battles or looked at anything interesting over in the war, or if it even left the US. But we know the Air Force had it. <laughs> Then uh, it became a Canadian airplane. If you look hard, you can see the Canadian registration on the tail. And then uh, after some time after that, it became American again, got another N number. And um, we got it from some folks in St. Augustine, and now it lives here in uh, Spruce Creek. Uh, so this is an A. Uh, the B model had a lot of the other modifications. We have that modification anyway. Is it an A or a B? It's just a grasshopper, who knows? Yeah, the wing tank is a fairy tank, right? It's, it's a tank tank. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Um, there's no, it's, so like some airplanes, like the Pitts, have a fairy tank that you can only use if you're not going to do aerobatics. This airplane, as long as you only keep it open during like cruise level flight, it doesn't care. Flying this airplane uh, is in a lot of ways the, the purest kind of flying. Um, it's not an airplane that you have to focus on, oh, did I, did I run the checklist? Did I, move, did I get the prop uh, sync? Did I get the mixture set exactly right? Did I have when the cowl flaps? You don't have any of that. There's not even a mixture. So as long as you have, you know, you have a carburetor heat, and that's pretty normal for a carbureted engine. But beyond that, um, it's just you, the stick, and the throttle. So um, flying it, you aren't worried about the setup of the airplane so much as, where do I want to go from here? Um, so in the pattern, it's a lot of power management as opposed to configuration management. There's, there's no flaps. Um, you don't have to throw the gear down. It's, it's down and welded. So um, flying it is in a lot of ways like riding a bicycle after you know driving a semi. 
Yeah, so you know, you do have more room. I mean, this one even from a, uh, the Champ is roomier than a Cub would be. And this airplane has a little bit more room than a typical Champ, which is a military addition, modification, however you want to look at that. Did they widen the fuselage or how they do They widened it a little bit. Um, if you look at the tail, um, the actual like vertical stabilizer itself is a bit bigger, like um, a normal Champ. The curve starts a little later. Not trying too hard, you know, with a student and full gas. Um, just budget five, six hundred feet. Nothing crazy, right? And that's not, you know, amazing by anyone's standards. But it's if you're trying and it's just you, it's it's pretty easy to get it off the ground three to four hundred feet um, on a no-wind day. Um, personal record is a hundred feet taking off, hundred feet landing. Um, but you're really you're you're mashing the brakes pretty good. Um, unless you've got some like rough grass or something to slow you down. Right. With the VFR mins, I'd say two to two and a quarter hours is about as long as you want to be in the air. Because okay. uh, if you're burning about um, five gallons an hour with this engine and cruise, um, and you have 13 plus the five and a half here, so we'll call it just even 18, um, that gives you, you know, three and a little bit of change. But with VFR mins, I like to keep it at an hour of mins. Yeah. So this is my my reserve. reserve, and the nose tank is my what I can burn. Yeah. So this aircraft is not meant for long distance, high capacity, large cargo operations, none of that. This is what you would call a low and slow airplane. So um, as an observation airplane, it was one that stayed right around 1,000 feet for the most part. You've got to be able to see the details nice and low. And as a trainer airplane, it's just as comfortable there. Um, so about 1,000 feet above the ground or less um, is kind of the best place to fly this airplane. Um, also, it doesn't help that it's not very well sealed. So if you go up higher and it gets cold, you're going to be cold too. Um, and no real heater to speak of. I mean, it's there, but it doesn't function all that well. Um, so this airplane is for, I want to go out and have fun flying. Uh, so for example, when I take this airplane out and I take it somewhere, um, I'm going to take it there a thousand feet the whole way. You're going to be following roads, going IFR, I follow roads, um, the whole way. So for example, I flew this to Tampa once uh, from here in Daytona area. So that's a couple hours flight and you did that the whole way pretty much using just roads. Uh, so I took a highway to another highway to another town to a lake to a string of lakes that pointed if you followed them and paralleled them to a road to another highway all the way into St. Petersburg. Yeah. So um, the fact that you can do that in any airplane is awesome but this airplane is especially good for it. And another reason for that is all the windows. So compared to a regular Champ this airplane has a great deal more uh, visibility just because it's meant as an observation plane it has more windows. Right. So you get quite, I mean unless you're trying to look through the wing or absolutely out through the tail cone, chances are you can see what's going on. Um, which is another great thing about this. So if you're trying to fly low over the beach and check to see if you can see, is that a dolphin down there? You might be able to tell. <laughs> so this aircraft is one of a few that Eagle Sport Aviation Club owns. We're a club that focuses primarily on the fun kind of flying. Um, so aerobatics, sport aviation, gliders, that's us. Uh, and this airplane is perfectly suited for that because it's a tailwheel trainer. So we use it to teach the tailwheel endorsement, um, and then once a person is checked out in it and is comfortable in the airplane, we let them fly it for fun, which is the idea. <laughs> um, so the club as a whole uses this as a tailwheel trainer um, pretty consistently. That's its primary role, and it serves that pretty well because it's not only um, a bit more comfortable than some other tailwheel airplanes that you might fly in. You know, you might have to squeeze yourself into a, an old J3 Cub or. Um, trying to hop into a pits with a parachute is an experience for those who haven't tried it yet. Um, but this airplane, large wide door, it has a starter and it has an actual oil filter so it can go 50 hours <laughs> between oil changes. So it has enough of the modern, um, not even accessories, but necessities to make it still comfortable to fly while still being bare bones and a true tailwheel experience. So you have the starter, but you might not have a GPS. We don't have any of that. We don't have any VORs or even a transponder. We have no electrical system. Uh, it's essentially the aviation version of a motorcycle battery powering our starter and a handheld radio for when we have to talk to people. 
Uh, table airplanes um, being less stable on the ground, a lot of the focus with them is uh, the landing. So typically you might start out uh, your tailwheel training with a maneuvers flight where you go out, you try some stalls, you try some slow flight, steep turns, uh, just to get familiar with the airplane. But the rest of the focus of the endorsement um, is simply landing the airplane. Uh, there are two kinds of landings we do in, this, in tailwheel airplanes. Uh, one is a wheel landing, which is to say you land on the two main front wheels uh, and then transition into uh, bringing the tailwheel on. Uh, that's good for a number of reasons, and a lot of aircraft it's easier to see over the nose that way. Uh, this airplane's not so bad. You sit in the front seat uh, as the PIC as, or as a solo pilot. Uh, so nose, being able to see over that is not too big of a deal. Uh, what is an issue typically is crosswind. So as you do a wheel landing, you come in with a bit higher airspeed, uh, which allows you to have greater controllability and easier landings in a crosswind. Uh, downsides to this is it is going to take up more runway and it can be harder to finesse onto the ground um, and may result in bouncing. So we try to um, work on that initially. The other kind of landing we do in this airplane is a three point, which as the name implies, you land on all three points at the same time. Um, so this one is more of a, what you do with a Cessna, uh, where you would essentially full stall the airplane about a quarter inch above the ground or as close as you can get. Um, so for this one, you come in a lot slower, uh, better for short field landings, um, but there is going to be reduced visibility over the nose as you come in to land. And since you're going to be closer to stall, you're going to be a lot less uh, effective on the controls later into the flare, which means that any crosswind you have to deal with or just any gust and turbulence, uh, it's going to be harder to fight kind of in that landing stage. Um, so for short field or for um, you know, calm days, three points, a great way to land. Wheel landings, my personal preference, um, easier for crosswind and controllability. Um, so from there, we do have to move on to crosswind landings, um, which in a wheel landing uh, is not so different from your standard Cessna crosswind landing. The upwind wheel comes on first, followed by the downwind wheel, and then the tailwheel. Uh, what we do to work on that specifically is something called a one-wheel go-around. Uh, that is to say, we land on the upwind wheel like we're making a crosswind landing, and then use power to keep the airplane in that state of, I'm landing in a crosswind, but I'm not slowing or speeding up. Um, and we hone our ability to stay on one wheel and fight the crosswind all the way down the runway um, until we decide to go around. And once you're comfortable on just one wheel, it makes landing in even a high crosswind very much more doable. So, if you're new to tailwheel flying, this is going to be a fairly forgiving aircraft for you because um, it still has um, the oleo strut gear that um, some aircraft have on the mains, like a Cherokee. Um, and initially, that can be a little different for people who are transitioning from bungee airplanes or spring steel airplanes uh, because those airplanes, if you bounce them, you bounce back into the air. Whereas in this airplane, Unless you bounce it really hard, chances are the gear is going to remain on the ground and you'll just travel within the oleo strut itself. So it'll extend and contract and the tire will remain on the ground. Right. Um, and this isn't a huge issue except for uh, when you're trying to tell, am I on the ground or did I bounce back up in the air? Right. Um, and additionally, if you bring the tailwheel on too early before um, the airplane's ready for it in a wheel landing, the nose will rise up, the gear will extend and suddenly you can't see over the nose. It feels like a stairman all over again. So the tailwheel endorsement as a whole is kind of a, it's not a rating, it's not a license, it's a honing of your skills. So even after you have the endorsement, flying this airplane to me is another way of making sure I continue to get better. So when I fly this airplane for fun, even though I teach in it all the time, I'm still making sure that I'm going out to fly it because I want to and because I want to work on something. So uh, even if I'm just going out and bouncing around, I might go, oh, do, how, how are my spin recoveries nowadays? Or how are, uh, how are my wheel landings? Or can I get a real short three point out of this? You know, everyone's working towards a personal record on how short I can take off or land this airplane, right? Um, and the great part is this airplane is perfectly suited for it because it's one that you can take out solo and it's one that does already land and take off short. You, know, you can get off the ground and easily a couple hundred feet without trying too hard. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like to see more, go ahead and subscribe. If there is an aircraft you'd like to see a bio on, comment below. Until next time, blue skies and tailwinds.
And there was much rejoicing. Oh, it's a, it's a serious, whatever. Um, as well as, honestly, I can't remember any of the other That's positives okay. about it, so I'm no, not really sure right. why I went into that. We, we've done this three times. So <laughs>